Are you using Windows because you have to, but don't particularly care for the included default apps or functionality? Or maybe you're concerned with how much of your personal data those Windows apps are sending to the web because, you know, privacy. Today, we're going to replace those Windows apps with free and open source software that respects your privacy. Let's talk about it. Whether it's the limitations of the built-in photo viewer, a horrible web browser, or the 20 minutes it takes to find a file you're looking for searching with File Explorer, there's a better way. There were too many apps to cover in this video, so this will be a two-part series. But in this video, I'll show you eight incredible open source programs that don't just replace, but outperform the Windows default apps. And the best part is, they're all free. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss part two. I won't waste any more of your valuable time. Let's jump right in. First up, let's replace Microsoft Edge with Firefox or Brave Browser. Both are faster, more secure, and privacy focused. Let's start out with Firefox. Now out of the box, Firefox is going to have all this stuff here that you may not be interested in. But that's one of the good things about Firefox. All of this stuff is customizable. So I'm just going to turn all this stuff off. Have a nice clean landing page here. One other thing I like to do is add my home button up here. This toolbar is also fully customizable. Just go to customize toolbar, take whatever you'd like and drag it up. I'll put my home button there. Some other things to consider. Let's go over here to manage more settings. Under privacy and setting, you can decide whether you want standard, strict, or custom privacy settings. I always check these two text box here. This is to tell websites not to sell or share my data and to send websites a do not track request. Now, a lot of websites aren't gonna honor this, but the legitimate ones will. So it doesn't hurt to check those boxes. Another thing that you want to do is come down here to Firefox data collection and use. By default, this will be selected to allow Firefox to make personalized extension recommendations and to allow Firefox to install and run studies. I'm going to turn that off. And you have a lot of other settings in here that you can customize, so make sure you go through here. Next up, let's take a look at Brave Browser. And same thing here, you can fully customize most of these options. Go into your privacy and security. Turn off anything that you do not want active. One of the things I do here under appearance is turn off the Brave Rewards button. Turn off the Brave Wallet button. Don't show the sidebar. I don't need the VPN button because I'm not going to use that service. I'll keep the Leo AI button and I'll keep the news button. If you'll notice, whenever you search using Brave, you don't get any sponsored results, just the results that you type for. So if I pose the question on how to mount a 75 inch TV, I'm going to get a response here from Leo. And then I'm also going to get some related search results, but none of which are sponsored, as you can see. Unlike Edge and Google, whenever you do a search, the first 10 things that pop up here on your search results are going to be sponsored paid ads, right? Next on our list is the alternative for File Explorer, and it's an app that's simply called the Files app. Looks very similar to Explorer except that it gives you the side-by-side -side comparison windows and it's typically much faster than the windows default explorer i can open directories in different windows and do side-by-side -side comparisons to download the files app just come down here to the files community site click on download and come down here to where it says classic installer you don't have to go through the Microsoft Store. I'm going to click on there. 
and as you can see it downloads up top. Next up on our list, if you are familiar with the standard notepad application, you will know that it's not very robust and it's got some very basic features for note taking. But we could replace this with Notepad++. Notepad++ is an open source powerhouse for coding, note taking, and managing text files. It's lightweight but incredibly feature rich. You can see up here you have all of this different functionality that the Notepad default application does not have. To get Notepad++, just head on over here to the notepad++.org developer site. Go to downloads. It's going to be the first one here. This is the latest release 8.7.4. Just going to click on that. Okay and I would like to make a disclaimer here. Do not click on any of this stuff here that says download. You're going to pick up some additional applications that you don't want. And there's usually always one comment, one person that says hey I went and downloaded this program you told me about and I got a virus. Well the chances are you didn't follow the instructions exact and you clicked on one of these links here. So you want to click on this one here that says installer. We're on the 64-bit version and we're going to click the first one that just says installer and that's downloaded here at the top of my screen and it's clean of viruses or my system would have told me so. Moving right along. So the next up on our list is gonna be a replacement for the built-in Windows Media Player. So as you're probably familiar with, if you've tried to play any type of media on the Windows Media Player app, it is very limited. The latest version of Windows Media Player still struggles with certain video formats. Meanwhile, the program that's been around for decades which is VLC Media Player, is an open source tool that plays virtually every format you can imagine. No extra codecs required. Now the interface here may look a little outdated, but don't let that fool you. It outperforms Windows Media Player every time. You could literally play almost any type of video format. You can even play DVDs and other physical media without having to download additional codecs. Yes, my Gen X and older friends, you can watch DVDs on your computer. You just need one of these trusty USB drives. I'll drop a link in the description. Next up on our list is the Windows Default Photo Viewer. If you are familiar with the Windows built-in Photo Viewer, you will know that it is also not very robust. It has some very basic options to view, zoom, flip your photo. Fairly primitive. A much better free and open source image viewer would be Image Glass. Image Glass gives you additional features for viewing photos. Now, it's still a photo viewer. If you're looking for something simple, it can definitely replace the Windows photo viewer. It is open source, so the source code is available to the public and you can get it for free. Downloading this one is a little tricky, so let me show you real quick. Now from the main image glass screen, if you just go to downloads, and let's scroll down here, it's going to try to lead you to believe that you're best downloading it from the Microsoft Store, because that's going to charge you $9.99. All you have to do is click on Get Image Glass Classic here. The only difference between the $10 version and the free version is with the free version, you have to manage your own updates. That's the only difference. But here's my recommendation. If you are just looking for a simple photo viewer that is free and open source and more robust than the default Windows Photo Viewer, Image Glass could be a good choice for you. It does come with additional features and resizing in addition to just being a photo viewer. However, I would recommend instead of having a dedicated app for photo viewing, if you're going to do any kind of image editing, just get rid of the photo viewers and download GIMP. I've done plenty of videos on GIMP. It is a comprehensive image editing tool, but of course you could just simply use it as your default photo viewer. Next up, for creative tasks, we're going to ditch Microsoft Paint and go for Krita. 
This open source app offers professional grade drawing and painting tools, and it's perfect for digital artists of all levels. You're gonna have a full array of tools over here and a good selection of paint brushes. This one is free and open source and definitely a good replacement for the Windows default paint tool. To get Krita, just open up your browser and type in Krita. You can get it directly from krita.org under the download here. And you can go ahead and click here for the Windows installer. And it will download to your downloads folder and then you can set it up. Next up is one of my favorite tools. We're going to replace the Windows snipping tool with ShareX screenshot tool. ShareX is a free and open source screen capture and recording tool that gives you a huge range of options for capturing, annotating, and sharing content. Unlike the Windows snipping tool, which is limited to basic screenshot features, ShareX provides many capture options including scrolling capture, this is perfect for long web pages or documents. The Windows snipping tool doesn't offer this. With Windows Capture, you can quickly grab specific application windows without cropping out other content. ShareX even has an auto capture feature, allowing you to set a timer and take screenshots automatically at set intervals, ideal for monitoring or time-lapse projects. The Windows snipping tool does let you draw or add highlights, but ShareX's editing tools go way further. Once you take a screenshot, ShareX opens up a built-in editor where you can add annotations like arrows, text, and shapes, blur sensitive information, or pixelate areas you don't want to show, apply color effects or drop shadows to make parts of your screenshot pop. Screen recording is another feature. You can record your screen and even create GIFs on the fly. ShareX also has other advanced options like OCR, that's Optical Character Recognition, which lets you copy text from images. I have a full setup guide on my channel that will show you where to get ShareX and how to set it up, and I'll link that below in the description. Next up, we're going to replace that Windows default mail app with Thunderbird. Thunderbird combines your email, calendar, and contacts in one place. If you are not new to my channel, you know that I've done a couple of videos before. Thunderbird is developed by the same team that brought us Firefox. So they've been in the game for a long time and they can be trusted for privacy and security. Thunderbird's calendar will sync with a lot of popular services like Google Calendar. So you can manage your email and contacts across multiple platforms. Thunderbird has an extensive library of add-ons. If there is a feature that you feel like it lacks, check the add-ons. There's probably one there for it. Thunderbird is a desktop application. So if you're using multiple web email addresses, Google, Yahoo, AOL, if you're that old, you can actually set up multiple inboxes within this one application so then you can just toggle through to your different inboxes instead of having to log into different browsers. Okay, so I guess if you count GIMP and the everything tool, that's 10, but hey, I'd rather over deliver. Don't forget to like and share the video, subscribe to the channel. Subscribing to the channel doesn't cost you a thing, but it helps me tremendously to grow the channel. And also you don't wanna miss part two of the free and open source apps that will replace those Windows default apps. Also, keep the suggestions coming for videos you would like to see. I do have a list of all of the suggestions from the comments and I am working on some of those videos you requested. So keep those comments coming. Thank you for watching and until next time.